Turning to 2050, I asked the young parrots to come up with a news item from 2050. We talked about space, the final frontier, the future of social interaction and the need to preserve openness and general computing capability. If you were to come up with a headline news item, something from a kind of a newspaper story or something like that, in your mind about something happening in 2050. Space colony by 2050, but uh, I, it's just when you really try to plan for the long run, space is really the place to go. And even <laughs> if uh, we don't colonize other planets any time in the near future, uh, the, the um, innovation that is coming out of space research is just so amazing and is helping people in so many fields from uh, medical or just uh, everyday life and so I think uh, the EU uh, and uh, the whole world really should invest much space. more in space research. So you think that we should be spending public money on uh, on space research? Yes. <laughs> Everybody agrees? <laughs> Sounds fun. Um, so um, in fact yes in our in, in the conversations we've had with some of the other groups, space has come through as uh, something that uh, really interested people. For a lot of the social interaction will, well, even more than today, will happen on online networks of one kind or the other. And I think every so often something of these big companies, which probably will be privately owned, unfortunately, um, will crash because of hackers or some other intrusion. And there will be a lot of, well, every so often there will be a lot of confusion because something, a large part of society relies on to coordinate their actions in private life but also in business life has been centralized into private hands and has successfully been overtaken by well, hackers, lols, cat, whatever, so <laughs> fun people on the internet thinking that well let's try what actually happens if we press that button and well they do and then actually yeah. have a clue what their devices do so they might be able to actually and um, well, choose to use different networks in parallel exactly to escape from such catastrophic events. I mean, I am online in various online groups, and I know that some people I can reach via, I don't know, 10 ways. And I try to make sure that, well, there is some kind of redundancy in all these social slash te you know, technological systems at all times. And I think it might be the case that more people actually take that position consciously in the future. So the future has got to be multi-platform, basically, with uh, redundancy built into it in case... Uh, in case something uh, goes wrong. Do I have any...? Um, yes, uh, I, I, on that note, uh, also uh, not just a uh, um, multi-platform but also open platform. What I think is going to be really important in the next years is to keep uh, general computation alive that, uh, to, because we are seeing a move from uh, real Turing complete machines to uh, uh, machines that um, are designed to do a specific task but that are not open yep. anymore. So uh, we need to uh, keep people educated and also keep uh, people uh, g uh, keep giving people the access to real general computers that they can do anything they want with. And if we don't keep open platforms, then people will start being reliant on particular producers. Of course, we already are because we only have uh, two mm. companies really mm. producing uh, CPUs. But um, uh, so maybe we should diversify there as well and and see that there's more competition in the hardware market. Yep, it's going to be difficult for anybody to break into uh, in, what is it? Intel and who's the other one? I've forgotten. Uh, AMD. AMD. Yeah, it's AMD. Yeah, yeah. A final flourish from the pirates there on industrial concentration in the microprocessor industry. Although we didn't mention. Um, Arm, a European company which is having some success in portable devices um, at the moment. Thank you for joining us. Till next time, and visit us at the Futurium, meanwhile.